Look. This is the fifth week of beginner obedience class at the Canine Campus Training and Wellness Center in Hubbard. <laughs> Erica Roden has been a trainer here for about a year. We kind of focus more on focus work, uh, distance distraction, getting dogs to be able to focus more on their pet parents. In this class, dogs learn skills such as come, sit, and stay. And we throw in some fun stuff in there too. Like I play a bunch of different games. We offer all different sorts of training. Um, a big portion of what we do is behavior training. Owner Katie Costello started her career as a licensed veterinary technician. It was the behavior end that really interested me there. Um, you know, the dogs that people were having trouble cutting their nails, you know, I, I would sit down and take the time and really just start working with behavior. One day I took the jump and said, you know what, I, I want to do this full time. This is, this is my true passion and what I truly Love. Costello says it's not very hard to train a dog once you understand how they communicate. We're speaking English and just because we say things it doesn't mean dogs were born with an English language. They weren't. Their natural language is body language. Good job. Here in this classroom these dogs are working on impulse control with trainer Timothy Patrick. We're working on a lot of calming behaviors, a lot of relaxation. Mm -hmm. uh, we're really rewarding those calming behaviors. The least advanced part of a dog's brain is their frontal lobe, and one of the many functions of the frontal lobe is impulse control. Mm -hmm. So they stink at it naturally. This is Cooper, one of the students in the class, who seems to have mastered impulse control. However, Cooper's owner, Jessica Lev, says he has some other issues he's working on. He has a fear of men, so that's an excitement, but not a positive one. Mm -hmm. So I work on him doing a stay and sit command to try and get him over that fear. He's done really well. Um, the instructor we have is a man, and he's able to come up to him. He's prolonging his stay and his focus, so it's doing really wonderful. He's done everything from AKC levels one through three to uh, therapy, dog training. It's a feel-good activity. So you take your dog into nursing homes or hospitals or reading programs at libraries or schools mm -hmm. and visit uh, with people. Or you can also work with a therapist. The center also trains service dogs who can handle any number of disabilities, such as diabetes, epilepsy, and PTSD. We do it two different ways. We'll either help train the person that has the dog or the other is I do um, we do a program over at Mercer County Prison where we take dogs into the prison they do the training and then the dogs come home on the weekends to stay with um, their person stay Why? The instructors are willing to work with them through various problems, but also to teach them new stuff. So a little piece of advice is to just stay patient with your pups, and uh, you know, if you ever have any questions, to seek the help of a, a trainer here at the Canine Campus, and we'd be glad to help you out. So really, it comes down to communication and bridging that gap for that human-animal bond to really occur. As far as what it takes to, um, you know, get them to sit and get them to down, once you're communicating well, it's actually quite easy. Oh, boy. It's good.